We continue now at the top of Daf Kuflam and Bezam and Aleph and Maseches Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra Daf 132a. And the previous Amud Shmuel said that if a person writes over all of his property to his wife and he has sons, in that situation we do not assume that he's actually giving a gift of all of his property to his wife. Rather, what we assume is that she's a caretaker of the property and the idea is that the son should have respect for the wife after he dies. And the Gemara now says, Boy, Rava Rava asked the following question, Bibari Heich, what would be if this husband who did this, if he was a healthy and individual. Maybe maybe it's only true by someone on his deathbed. Because he wants that her words will be heard. He wants her to be respected by his sons. But when it comes to a healthy individual, he's alive right now, and so therefore there's no need. So he really is giving her a gift. Oh, Dilmar, maybe Bari Nami, when it comes to a healthy person, also, Nichole de Lishtamun Mila Mehashta. He wants that her words should be heard, that she should be respected starting now already. And the Rashbam explains, Boy Rava Bibori Shakasav Kal Nechasav Leishto. Rava asks, by a healthy person who writes over all of his property to his wife, Ulechol Hani da Iri Shmuel, all of the cases that Shmuel would say that same halacha, Im Kasav Lahem Bimatona Mehayom Legamri. Let's say he gives them a gift from today, a complete gift. Inami Mehayom Lachar Misur, maybe the gift is going to be from today, but it will take take place after he dies. Do we say that if he's a healthy individual, it actually is a gift? Because if it's to give her honor, he's already alive and they're going to honor her because they fear him. Or maybe not, he wants that her words should be heard from now, because they know they know that in the future they're going to be subservient to her because again, he's making her a caretaker on the property. That's the question. Is he making, a careta- is he making her a caretaker in this situation? or is he giving her a gift? And the Gemara continues, Tashma, come in here, a proof from the following, Brisa, HaKosev Peros Nechasev Leishto, if somebody writes over the produce from his property to his wife, meaning he gives her the profits from the property as a gift, Gove Ksuba Samin HaKarka, when she collects her Ksuba, she collects her Ksuba from the land itself, Lamechsa Lishlish Villaravia, let's say he writes a document that gives her half or a third or a quarter of the property, Gove Ksuba Samin HaShar, she collects her Ksuba from the rest of the property, Kasev Kol Nechasev Leishto, if he writes all of his property over to his wife, that's similar to the case that Shmuel had earlier, and then a star chov, a document comes, there's a creditor co- that comes and says that he really should get that property. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Tikra matanosa al ksubasa. she should tear up the gift and she could take that same property as payment for her ksuba. The idea over here is that the gift was given after the debt and therefore the creditor takes precedence if it is a gift, but if she's collecting it as her ksuba, so her ksuba takes precedence. So Rabbi Eliezer is saying she should tear up the gift and she could collect that same property as part of Raksuba, that way the creditor will not get that property. The Chachamim Omer, but the Chachamim say the other way around, Tikra Ksuba, so she tears up her Ksuba, which the Rashbam will explain exactly what that means, but she tears up her Ksuba, Vesamur Al-Matanosa, and she keeps the gift, which she won't be able to get the gift because the creditor is taking that property. Venimsis Karachas Mikana Mikana comes out that she's bald from both sides, meaning to say she will not be able to get the property according to the Chachamim. And the Brisa continues, Vyam Rabbi Yehuda Hanachtum and Rabbi Yehuda the baker said, There was an incident that it actually happened with the daughter of my sister, who also happened to be my daughter in law. And this incident came before the Chachamim. And they said, She should tear up her Ksuba in accordance with the ruling of the Chachamim, not Rabbi Eliezer. She should tear up her Ksuba and she should keep the gift, which she will not be able to take the gift because the creditor is going to get that. It will come out that she's bald from both sides, meaning to say she will not not be able to collect this land. And the Rashbam explains, HaKosev Bimaton, if somebody writes over as a gift to his wife, Peros Nechos of the fruits, the produce from his property, Sha'achsha Be'ena, could be talking about produce that, has, that is actually right in front of us right now, Inami Or Da'akni Lakarka Leperosa, or maybe he gave her the land that she should get the produce from that land, she gets the profits of the land, Da'akni La Begufa De'ara Da'kani, she's getting within the land that she gets all, the, all of the produce that comes from the land. So Gova Kol Ksubasa Min HaKarka, when she collects her Ksuba, she could take the land itself. And the point over here is, just because of this gift, she isn't mochel, she's not forgiving the fact that she's owed the actual land itself for the ksuba. And then the b'risa goes on to say, let's say he gives her the land and the produce, he gives her half of the land, or a third of the land, or a quarter of the land as a gift. Again, she's able to collect her ksuba from the rest of the land. She takes the gift, and she takes the ksuba, 
Ksuba as well. And the Rashbam continues, Kasav Kol Nechasav Le'ishto, if he writes over all of his property to his wife, the Kasal Kadai Tachashta, and the Rashbam says, right now we think, Afilu B'Makam Banam, we're talking about the exact same case as Shmuel, that there are sons, but he's giving all of the property to his wife. The Yamar Shmuel Le'el, and Shmuel said earlier, Lo Asa El Apetropa, she doesn't really get the land in that case, because she's really just an Apetropa, she's just a caretaker. The Hacha Kamar Dekanyan, here it seems that the Bryce is saying that she actually does acquire the land. The Yatza Olav Shtarchov, and then a Shtarchov goes out on the land, Shekadim Lamatana Zoom, meaning the creditor, he had precedence over this gift. The debt was actually before the husband gave this gift. Umiu Luchsubasa Lokadim. Now, nevertheless, the Rashbam says her Ksuba comes before the rights that the creditor has to the land. So the question is, does she get the land as part of her Ksuba, or now that it was given as a gift, she's getting it only as a gift, and therefore the creditor takes precedence and he will take the land? And so that was a Machlokas Tanoim, Tikra Matanasa Vitamur Al Ksubasa. Rabbi Eliezer said she can tear up the gift. This is to her advantage, and she can instead take it as her ksuba. Because the whole point of this gift was to give her more strength. That that way she'll get the other property. In other words, she gets some property as a gift, and she'll get the other property as a ksuba. But Rabbi is saying she isn't giving up on the obligations that she's able to, on the obligations he has that she can collect her ksuba. She's not giving up on her rights to this property because of this gift. That if this gift should go away, because there's a creditor who has precedence, so she can get that same property because she has the strength of her ksuba. That's why she would want to tear up the gift and instead collect it as her ksuba. That's what Rabbi Eliezer says. The Chachamim say the opposite. She tears up her ksuba and she has to take this as a gift and a gift only. And the Rashbam notes, because she's not actually tearing up her ksuba. She's not giving up her ksuba because of a gift that the husband gives her. For example, if the husband would have other property that he would acquire after this, she would get the ksuba from that. Like we'll say later on in the sugya. Because that's what he writes in the ksuba, the property that I have and that I'm going to get in the future. The point is, from this particular property, the Yahiv law that he gave her as a gift, so from that particular property, so there she's saying she's not going to collect that property as, as part of her ksuba. From that property, she won't collect her ksuba. Since she was already given it as a gift. Because she's not thinking that a creditor might come and then collect the same exact land with his debt. Therefore, she's essentially tearing her ksuba with regards to this property. She's not going to collect this property as part of her ksuba. And then the Chachamim say that she, the, the gift remains, meaning if it's possible for her to, to collect it as a gift, she will. If not, not. Therefore, in this case, since it's not a good gift because the creditor has it, it comes out that she's bald from both sides, meaning she does not collect the, the, the property at all. And the Rashbam continues, Umiyu, and nevertheless, Mechila Betos, Lesa, this is not considered to be a Mechila Betos, meaning maybe you would say it's considered that she's forgiving her rights to the Ksuba with regards to this property by mistake, but it's not considered that. Ahimatana Gemur Haisa because at the time that this gift was given, it was a full gift. There's no mistake over here. Dahai boy Baal Matsi Masalak Lebezuze, had the husband wanted to, he could have removed the creditor and paid off the creditor with money, and therefore, since it is not a Mechila Betos, again, according to the Chachamim, the Matana stands, but she does not get the matana, and she's not able to collect the property as her ksuba. And the Gemara continues, Time of the Yotza all of Shtarchov. In this Bryce, so the reason why she's not able to collect from this property when it's given as a gift is because the creditor came along and he took the property. Halo Yotza all of Shtarchov, but had there not been a Shtarchov, had there been no creditor, so Kanya, so she could take this property as a gift. And so the question is as follows, Uvamai, what exactly is the case over here? Ilema Bishchiv Meiraf, we're talking about somebody who's on his deathbed, Amrit Loa Sa'el Apatropis, but we already said in the previous Amrit, Shmuel said that she's considered only an Apatropis when he's gifting her all of the property. She does not get the property, she's just being made a caretaker in order that her sons give her respect. So El Alav, rather, is it not Bibori? You have to say that this price is talking about that the husband was a healthy individual, and that's why the gift is effective, and therefore we have an answer for our question. Shmuel's halacha applies only by a Shchimera and not by a Bori. 
And the Gemara continues and answers, Leolam b'shchemera. Really, we could say this Bryce is talking about a shchemera. And again, the question is, then why does she get the gift at all? Don't we say that she's just a caretaker? And the Gemara answers, Verav avira muki lo bekulu, and ravina muki lo beishto arusa veishto gerusha. As we said in the previous Amud, this does not apply to all wives. Let's say it's a wife that's just betrothed, but he's not really married to her. Let's say it's a wife that he divorced. So in those situations, it actually is considered a gift. The Gemara here, when it says, Rav Avira Muki La Bakulu, that's just repeating the same language it used on the previous summit, but essentially it's the same answer. Both Rav Avira and Ravina, they'll say that the Bryce is, is either talking about Ishto Arusa or Ishto Garusha. And the Rashbam explains, Rav Avira Muki Bakulu, Rav Avira will say the Bryce is talking about all of the cases that we discussed above. Kidamrina Lael, this is like what we said earlier. Kulhu konu dahainu bas eitzel habonim ve'ishto arusa ve'ishto gerusha. Rav Avira said earlier that all of the cases above, which is a daughter when there are sons, or let's say again his wife who's betrothed or his wife who's divorced, they're all going to receive it as a gift. They are not considered caretakers. Va'achinami, that's what we're applying over here in this brisa. Hach ishto de katani when it says his wife in the brisa, hainu ishto arusa ve'ishto gerusha means ishto arusa or it means ishto gerusha. Umiu be'bas eitzel habonim. Nevertheless, the Rashbam notes you can't say by bas eitzel habonim, which again they're all. Also, we consider it to be a gift. Lekalu you can't say that that's what the Bryce is talking about. Da ishto katani, because it says explicitly in the Bryce of the word ishto. So it just means, again, the Bryce is either ishto arusa or ishto gerusha, according to Rav Avira. And the Rash- Rashbam notes, Vikashana, if you're going to ask, Haravina nami bishto arusa, ishto gerusha mukilo, kin mefarsh lakame. The Gemara is about to say, the Ravina also will say the Bryce is talking about ishto arusa and ishto gerusha. So there doesn't seem to be any difference between Ravina and Rav Avira. Vimkena, my cover Gemara, Rav Avira mukilo bakula. Why does the Gemara say that Rav Avira? Vira says that it's in all of the cases. Lemanami, Rav Avira Muki La Ishto Arusa, Ishto Grusha, just say the same thing. Rav Avira also will say the Bryce is talking about Ishto Arusa and Ishto Grusha. To Haleka Benayu El Abbas Eitzel Abonim Lachud, because the only machlokis between Rav Avira and Ravina is by the case of Bas Eitzel Abonim. Kidafarishis Lael, as we explained earlier, there there's a machlokis whether it's a gift or not. Ube Bas Eitzel Abonim Leka Lokma, but you can't say the Bryce is talking about Bas Eitzel Abonim anyway. To Ishto Katani, because it says the word Ishto, it says his wife in the Bryce. So Tarit, so you can answer that by saying, Saying Misham da Amr Lael, because earlier when we brought down these opinions, we said Rav Avira Mishmei de Rava Amar Kulhu Kano Vechula. We use that same language. The Rav Avira says it's all going to be a Kenyan with the exception of etc. Hilkach Naken Nami Hacha Kiahut Lishna de Lael. Therefore, over here we use the same language we used above, but really it's the same answer for both Rav Avira and Ravina. And the Gemara continues. Amar Rav Yosef Bar Menyume Amar Rav Nachman Rav Yosef Bar Menyume says that Rav Nachman says Halacha. The Halacha is Tikrak Subasa. She tears up her Ksuba with regards to this property. This means to say that the halach is like the chachamim in the above brisa. V'samur amatanos and the gift stands. V'nimses karachas mikan mikan. It comes out that she's bald from both sides, meaning to say she does not collect the land as part of Raksuba, but she cannot collect it as a matana either because of the creditor. And the Gemara continues. Lameimer does that mean to say the loazor of Nachman baser umdana that Rav Nachman doesn't follow umdana? Again, the idea of umdana is that even though something, let's say, is written out explicitly in a certain way, but if we can make certain assumptions that it's not meant to be taken that way. That's what we do. But in this case, Rav Nachman is saying, we don't follow Umdana. We assume that she wants to take it as a gift and only a gift. And not, and we assume that she was mochel her ksuba. We assume that the ksuba is gone and that's why she's not able to collect the land. It sounds like Rav Nachman is not following Umdana. But can that be? Vatanya, but we learned in a b'raisa. Let's say a son, let's say a person's son travels far away. And the father hears that his son died. He gets up and he writes all of his property to others. And then his son comes back. It turns out that his son was alive. Matanaso, matanaso. The Tanakhama says that his gift is going to be a good gift, meaning to say, even though probably he was only giving the gift because he thought his son had died, but still he gave the gift, and therefore we do not follow Umdana. We say the gift is a good gift. Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya, Omar Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya says, Ain matanaso, matana. The gift is not a gift. We can assume that he was only giving the gift because he thought that his son had died. She'ilu ha'yodeya shabin okayim. Had he known that his son was alive, lo he certainly would not have written over that gift. And therefore, if Shimon ben Menasya is following Umdana, he's assuming, even though he gave the gift, he didn't really mean it. V'yamar of Nachman, and Rav Nachman says, Halach, like Rav Shimon ben Menasya, the Halach is like Rav Shimon ben Menasya. So here it sounds like Rav Nachman is following Rav Shimon ben Menasya, and does follow Umdana, it seems to be a contradiction within Rav Nachman. And the Gemara answers, Shani Hasam, it's different over there by the case of the Ksuba, the Nichola de Tepek Alakola de Chazvinu Nehila Lahanu Nechasim, because it's good for her that the word should go out that her husband wrote over to her all of this property, meaning in the case of the gift, she actually wants the gift and she's willing to forego the Ksuba. We don't assume that her intention is 
not to forego the ksuba because she wants to have it as a gift that the word should go out that she was given this gift. And the Rashbam explains, Umashani, the Gemara answers, Hachanami Bosar Umdana Azar Rav Nachman. In this case of the Ksuba as well, Rav Nachman is following Umdana. He is determining what her true intention is. To come our Tikra Ksubas because he's saying that she should tear up her Ksuba. The Nichola Bahachmatana, she prefers having it as a gift. Misham the Tapak Kola, that way the word goes out. I Mehemna Vechashuva Gabibala, that she's trusted and she's considered important to her husband. Umisham Hachi Kasav La Kal Nechasav, that's why he wrote over to her all of his property. Uvahiya No, and with that benefit, Machla Shibra Ksuba, so she gives up on the Sheba that she has on the Ksuba. Viyamran, she says, Yasi Balchovetarif, Lahani Nechse, Lochai Shina. If a creditor comes and takes that property, it does not concern me. And the Gemara continues, Tanan Hasam, we learned in the Mishnah over there, this is a Mishnah in Meseches Peya, HaKosev Nechasev Levonov, if somebody writes over his property to his sons, V'chasev Le'ishto Karka Kalsh, when he gives his wife a small amount of land, of the Ksuba, so she loses her Ksuba. And the Gemara asks, Misham the Chasav la Karka Kalshu, just because he gave her a little bit of land of the Ksuba, so that's the reason that she loses her Ksuba. And the Gemara answers, Amar Rav, Rav says, Bimezakalahan al Yoda, the case is that she provides the Sudr, she provides the scarf for the Kenyan Sudr, so she actually participates in the acquisition of the property that her sons are making, and that shows, that demonstrates that she's giving up on her Ksuba. Ushmul Amar Shmuel says, Bimechalik lefana, he distributes it in front of her, she sees what's going on, Vihisho Sakas, and, and she's quiet, that indicates again, that she's mochel on, on, on her ksuba in terms of this property. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina says, He says to her, you're taking this small amount of land as your ksuba. And again, that shows, that demonstrates that she's giving up on the ksuba. And the Rashbam explains, Tanan Hasam, we learned in a mission over there, B'Meseches Peya, B'Sof Perek Gimel, there's a Meseches Peya, M'Shom Deboi Lo Rava, B'Bari Heich, since Rava's going to ask on this, what is the halacha if it's a healthy man, Naked Lo Nami Hacha, that's why we bring this over here, we're bringing Sugis over here, where Rava always asks, is this true only by a Shechiv or is it true by a Bari as well? Hachi Garcin Allah HaKosif in the Chasav Levana, V'Lo Garcin on Kol, the proper text is, he gives his property to his sons, it doesn't say all of his property, V'Chasav Leishto Karka Kol, he gives some land to his wife, he doesn't explain whether this land he's giving to the wife is for the ksuba or as a gift. If it's to pay off the ksuba, that would be like he's giving her some of the ksuba. And there everyone would admit, everyone would agree whatever he gave to the sons is nothing because it, there's already a shibut for her ksuba. But of the ksuba, so we say the halach is she loses her ksuba. And the Rashvam knows. It's low of the of the mamish. We don't mean she totally loses her ksuba. Shemyikna nechasim acherkach because if the if the husband should acquire any property after that, tigba mehen hamoser kidel kamon. She will be able to collect whatever is left, as we said later on. Da kasavla da kanoi udo aser anad lemikni. Again, as we'll say later on, it says in the ksuba whatever I'm going to get in the future also is goes to her ksuba. Ela of the ksuba sa mehani nechasim. The mishnah just means she loses her ksuba from that property that was given to the sons. Shem lo yikna habal nechasim acherim. Meaning if the husband never acquires any further property, she's going to lose out. From that which he gave to his sons, she can't collect. The point over here in the mission is, she agreed to this gift. Since he also gave her some karka, she's essentially forgiving the rest of her ksuba. As the Gemara will go on to explain, the case over here is again, he gave them and her all of the property. But let's say he left even one palm tree, one day tree that he didn't that he didn't apportion. Amrina lekamon. So then we'll say later on, migo de nachta dikla nachta nami akula. Once she's able to descend for the palm tree, she's able to take from everything as well. The kaparach mishum the chasav la karka kol shu bitmi. Now the Gemara asks because he gave her a little bit of karka. That's the reason she loses her ksuba. So the Gemara had three answers from the Amoraim. Amar Rav Rav says bimizakel and al yada askinam. We're talking where she participates in the Kenyan. She gives her suder to be used as the, as the Kenyan for the sons. Because we establish that the, it's the vessels of the person acquiring that are used for a Kenyan suder. The point is, from the fact that she's participating in the sons getting this property, and furthermore, she was given a little karka. And she's not protesting at all. Since you have both of these factors, 
Azu, Shalotucha Litrov Man Ksubasa. Clearly, she fully agrees to this that they're going to get this gift and she won't collect from this property or Ksuba. Umachlo Lahen Hashiva Chal Nechasim Alolo. She's Mochel, the Sheba that she has on this property. They have Sida Ksubasa. She loses her Ksuba in Lotim Salmakam Achel Ligvos if she can't find another place to collect her Ksuba. That was the answer of Rav. Ushmuel Amar Shmuel says even further. I feel Ain Mezakel who Al Yada. Even if she didn't participate in the Kenyan, Al Shahaisal Sham Beshaa. She caused him the Chasu Levanov as long as she was present at the time it was given to her sons. Vishal Sakas and she was quiet. To cave in the chas of lakarka kolshu, since he gave her a little bit of land, nisratza she has agreed. Ushtika kod adanya, her silence is like an admission. Avalim lo nasan laklum. Now, if he wouldn't give her anything, shtika ena ela kadei lasos nachas ruach lebala, then it would be different. Then we would say her silence is just because she does not want to upset her husband, and the silence would not be considered an admission in that situation. Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Chanina says, Afilu lo hais hashem even if she wasn't present. Velo chalak befana, the land was not a portion in front of her. Ela shamar loshen zeh. However, when he gave her that piece of land, he said, when he gave her karka kolsha, when he gave her that land, he said, he wrote, take this karka, take this land as your ksuba. And she did not protest. That's enough to say that she was mochel her sheba on the rest of the property. And the point over here is that every amor is getting more mekel, is getting more lenient in terms of dealing with the husband when we say that she's given up on her ksuba. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Kuf Lamid Bays Amid Bays.